Hi, right, thanks. Thanks very much for having us back and uh, at a really exciting stage for the company. Um, no, no secret as to what we're looking for. Copper Search is very much uh, single focused on copper in the Gawler Craton in the top and northeast corner of South Australia. We're actively drilling right now. I don't think there's a more exciting copper story for the potential scale of targets where we're after at the moment. We've got assays pending. Uh, we've got another fantastic target. We've got a drill, drill rig um, on site setting up to start drilling over the next couple of days. So um, a lot of really good um, reasons why people should have a very hard look at copper search at the moment. Um, so uh, maybe just next slide if we could. A um, little bit of corporate um, overview. As you said, um, you know, market cap sort of sitting anywhere between about 20 and 30 million. Uh, cash on hand at last quarter, 7 million. Um, so we have, uh, we've got plenty of cash to get on with drilling all of our targets uh, this year. And as I said, very active on the ground at the moment, uh, having worked up um, a number of really compelling targets over the last 18 months since listing with uh, the Alto Cap guys, um, Adam Belton and Tony Licardo, um, sort of certainly been following us uh, through through our phase there. Just next slide. Um, I think what people should look at, think, consider about, and what I, I think about before I invest in uh, a company and in what makes a successful explorer. Uh, and a lot of it, I think, is the right team. Um, I want to talk to you know these different points as I go through the presentation. This is a bit of the framework of what I'm going to talk to you about today. And um, before I and I want to get to that sort of the exciting stuff of what's happening out on the on the drill rig right now in the field. Um, so right commodities, obviously copper. Right timing, uh, well, you know, short, medium, and long term on copper is looking pretty good. The right projects, um, we'll talk to that in the right jurisdictions um, and the best drill targets and attract the right funding. So next slide, please. Um, the team. Um, so the board on the left-hand side of the page, um, very experienced team there. We've got um, one of the uh, explorationists, Dr. Uh, Tony Belperio, who, was, who discovered Prominent Hill, a very significant IOCG Iron, iron iron oxide copper gold IOCG copper deposit in South Australia, which is now owned and operated by BHP. So uh, it's and near Olympic Dam. Um, so we've got very strong technical on on the left hand side of the page. Uh, that group of um, directors has seen various exits and takeovers, multiple exits, um, and have added four billion dollars of shareholder value in the exploration space. So. Um, that's a pretty good uh, place to look and say, well, good track record. Why are these guys interested in um, this stuff in the Gawler Craton? What, what's, what's it all about? Exploration team, um, I, I run that, CEO and exploration manager, um, really passionate about um, the exploration up in the in the Gawler, in the Gawler Craton, in the peak in Denison where we are. Um, and I've worked uh, throughout Australia, also overseas, Papua New Guinea and Alaska. Um, and run a number of other businesses as well. So a bit of a diverse background there. Uh, Theo Aravanis, geophysics is, is so critical in today's um, exploration um, explorationist. And Theo's got over 25 years of mineral exploration expertise. He uh, worked for over 15 years as the chief geophysicist for Rio Tinto's global exploration group. So he brings an enormous wealth of uh, knowledge and skills, having seen mineral deposits all over the planet. And same with John Main, who we've got in as a technical advisory panel chairman. Um, he and Tony sit on a, on a technical advisory panel and they provide a, a, an, an extra view on what my team's come up with from exploration targets and gives that sort of technical view to the board. Um, John Main, over 40 years experience in the industry, was uh, exploration manager of Rio Tinto Americas uh, and then also you know, some good local geos, et cetera, uh, with uh, discovery success. Uh, Richard Hill involved in the Paris Silver Discovery. Um, next slide, please. Um, so you probably, you know, everyone's, you, you may or may not be aware of um, South Australia's, uh, some of the largest copper deposits uh, on the planet, the largest uranium uh, production on the planet at Olympic Dam owned by BHP. Um, certainly uh, BHP just recently on their takeover for Volvos Minerals, picked up Prominent Hill and Carapatina, significant scale copper deposits. But uh, in the southern and the, or sort of in the middle part of the Gawler Craton, 
Um, the northeast corner is where we are, the peak in Dennis, or what we're calling the peak project, um, and an area that's been a, a bit overlooked because for a long time, it was thought to be uh, 50 million years too young. The rocks there, the intrusions that give rise to these IOCGs, were dated as being very um, 50 million years younger than the big, the big three across the middle. So not, not a lot of people had a crack at that. Um, if we just go to the next slide, um, that all changed in 2022 um, when Oz Minerals funded uh, some drilling on in the peak in Denison. And it'll probably, um, actually, let's let's go to the next one. That one's going to be pretty hard. I can't use a pointer on that, not today. But the peak in Denison, um, the reason why it's actually prospective for ICGs that are a bit younger than the rest of them is that the peak in Denison actually used to be, you go back uh, 1.8 billion years ago, the Gola Craton was rotated around. It was attached to the Cloncurry district, the eastern succession. And those ICGs are 50 million years younger. And what's happened is, over the last 1.8 billion years, the plates have sort of drifted apart and we've brought the Gawler Craton into South Australia, but we've dragged a bit of, of Queensland in with us where those IOCGs were a little bit younger. And, and that's that was the theory. And I guess uh, last year, uh, that fund, that drilling by D Metallica, funded by Oz Minerals, uh, saw uh, two IOCG mineral system identified. That program then just stalled with the whole um, Oz Minerals takeover with BHP, et cetera, et cetera, and D Metallica was taken over by AAC Mines. So uh, nothing else has been done uh, for, for a little while. So let's just go to the next slide and let's have a look at our overall ground package. It's 5,500 square kilometres. It's a huge area. So we came in with a new exploration strategy looking at a lithostructural analysis to narrow the focus. Um, and we looked at this, these major fault zones were critical to allow that deeper fluids to be in place or deeper intrusions to be in place, and allow fluids to come up that can give rise to those ISCG mineralization systems. I'll just go to the next slide again. Um, one of the things that we did do that was probably different is we talk about ranking our targets and we don't talk about what's our best target. We talk about what, how does our target rank against other known IOCGs uh, worldwide and also in Cloncurry and in South Australia. So what we want to see before we're going to go and drill one of these things is that it's got the proximity to the right age structures, gravity, mag anomalies, et cetera, that matches an existing deposit. So we don't want to go and just test out some mad theories. Uh, we're actually out there comparing our ground to known other deposits and saying, well, this is what ours looks like. Uh, that's a valid target, let's go drill it. So let's go to the next slide. So we went out there and we drilled our first hole uh, only in, <coughs> excuse me, in May. Now we drilled that with a, um, initially with a small, a smallish rig, uh, which, and only had uh, the target. We drilled that to the limit of rods to 458 metres. Um, and then we cased that off with HQ uh, casing so that we can come back and uh, extend that hole with, with a different drill string with a larger rig, which is actually up on site right now. Um, just started to, or we'll be colouring AC30 very, very over the weekend. Um, now, what we, uh, we've got actually assays pending on this, and we wanted to do an IP survey around this whole, this whole target. It's, it's 1,400 metres long, 800 metres wide. It's a significant gravity anomaly, 3.8 on the milligal scale. And I'll, I'll talk to the, that in a moment. Um, but it's it's a it's a, a large potential scale prospect with one drill hole sort of into part of it. And we were doing an IP survey, which is underway now, which will be finished uh, very early next week. And then we'll decide what we want to do. We want to deepen the hole, drill further holes around that area, uh, et cetera. And obviously assays pending. So um, that will come out very soon. Um, just next slide. Um, the other things we've been doing is, is regional exploration um, to, do, to work up other drill targets. We initially had 80 geophysical targets and we brought that back down to the top six and we've committed to drilling these targets on the page here and you can see the milligal response. Carapatina, when it was, before it was discovered, was a milligal of two. So anything over two is a strong gravity anomaly that could indicate that you've got a lot of metal in the ground. Um, as in the very basic, most basic sense. Um, some of these targets are very, very quite shallow. We also conducted an airborne EM survey um, and followed up with ground EM for AC30. 
Uh, so that's an ISCG style target, more of a sulfur dominant rather than uh, the O for um, iron oxide, iron sulfide copper gold system, uh, another system that's sort of typical in the Cloncurry area. Um, so we've, we're going after large scale targets. Um, let's just go to the next slide. And where do they sit in the middle belt there? And along this Karari shear zone, if you can see, it runs sort of from the bottom left of the page up across the page to the top right. And the Wills prospect in there uh, lies on the, uh, what was Demetallicus ground is now, um, it's a now Oz Minerals, BHP, AIC. It's a, a convoluted story of takeovers that recently in the last few months. Um, but they hit ISCG mineralization in that hole. And so we're a long structure from that at AC23. And then at AC30, we've also got this absolutely booming um, EM response. And we've got a rig on site at the moment about to test that. Uh, the rig will, will then probably come back, you know, may well deepen AC23 or potentially drill some other targets in that region, depending on the results of the IP survey, which is should be finished this weekend. So as I said, there's a, a lot of action going on and we're chasing tier one scale um, IOCG uh, copper targets. So I'll uh, just go to the next target, uh, next slide. Um, yeah, just AC23, as I said, uh, large um, EM response on that, drill rig setting up on site. And we'll just go to the last slide. Um, Again, just the just the one more slide, please. Uh, no, okay. Oh, yep, that's good. Uh, this is the last one. Uh, so just just to reiterate the the points again, um, we've got a really strong geoscience team, um, strong, very well funded. We've got a lot more cash than our targets that we've committed to. Drill rig on site, um, IP crew completing over the weekend on AC23, assays pending imminently. Um, so really exciting time for investors to take a good hard look at Copper Search. Thanks, Duncan. Uh, great uh, great presentation. First question, I want to talk about the, uh, the copper price. We all know that copper you know, is such an important part of uh, uh, the component of an EV, uh, of EV battery. Uh, yeah, the copper price hasn't had, had, had been great this year. What's, what's your view on that, and uh, where do you where do you see that going over the next six to twelve months? Well, you know, I I, I think the copper the copper I think the copper price is you know the copper price fluctuates a little bit. But I remember I went and looked at a project in uh, Cyprus, uh, and it was from uh, BC times, the Roman times, and it was a copper project, and they had a bit of gold with it. And you know what, copper and gold don't go away they're still there thousands of years later it's no bubble uh and it's needed no matter what so i think that copper is you know is you know, if you want to look at the month by month or day by day copper price um you know these types of projects um everyone knows you can create a huge amount of value out of a tier one uh copper discovery in an iocg belt yeah no i hear you loud and clear uh, question here: The company recently announced a new high priority dual target uh, AC30, which was identified by a geophysics survey. You recently commented that this looks like a, a an iron sulfide uh, copper gold ISG system. Can you yeah. give us some color? Give us some more color on this target. Yeah, so an ISCG is probably more structurally controlled. It might be um, copper that's come into a shear zone um, and probably you know, mineralized in a slightly different fashion. So typically doesn't have as large a gravity footprint. It's got a modest gravity uh, anomaly on it, uh, which is which is encouraging. Um, and it's, you probably, in the Cloncurry area, you certainly get that, um, you know, these can be sort of five to 20 million tonnes of contained, you know, sort of, so they, they can be pretty, pretty decent size sorts of deposits. This is incredibly shallow. There's no GAB, there's no aquifers over top of it. So it's, it's a, it's a, and it's 800 metre strike extent. Um, it's definitely worth following up uh, with a drill hole. We've got, and it's in that fertile corridor, the Karari shear zone. So, you know, you kind of, you know from De Metallica's drilling at the Wills Prospect that this is a fertile zone. So if you see a, a conductor there of this response, you go drill it. And I think you said that you hadn't commenced drilling. What is the state? Of, you know, is that the case? And when do you expect if you're when are you going to start drilling? And when do you expect the results to be available? Yeah. So the the rig is actually literally on site now, uh, and the guys are just setting it up and mixing up the muds 
uh, you know, today, tomorrow. So I'm hoping they'll be drilling on the weekend or Monday. So uh, if that's that, so, I would say imminently. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> All right. And uh, what other potential drilling targets has the company identified at this stage? And uh, what survey plans do you have? Yeah. So, I mean, I guess if you, if we, we could just flick back maybe one, two, three slides back to the high priority drill target slide. There's a number of um, targets there, which we've committed, sorry, one more, one further back. Uh, there's a list. Yeah, that's it. Oh, Thanks very much. Um, so as I said on that, you've got their rig on site setting up now, AC30. Kurt America will head, we'll head back, we'll head down there, put this big rig onto that one um, after that. And we're considering bringing up a second rig to uh, drill any other targets, AC23, uh, and potentially uh, any other targets around AC30, uh, depending on, on results. So um, you know, that's, that's our main list. But again, this has come down from 40 targets and people sort of, but you do, you just still it down and compare it to other known deposits, and you say, well, this is the these are the best targets here. Any any one of these um, targets gets a good sniff, they yep. get turned into a prospect, and we're going to start drilling drilling them out. I just wanted to close up. Uh, how's your balance sheet looking? Uh, are you sufficiently funded to to obviously carry out the uh, the current drilling program? Yep. So we've got. Seven million, seven million Australian dollars in the bank. I nearly said US dollars. Seven million Australian <laughs> dollars in the bank. <laughs> and uh, no, we've got we've got more money than drill targets that we are prepared to drill. So I think that's always a good place to be. Uh, and we're being methodical with the targets. So we're we're making we're we're being you know confident with uh, what we we are putting the drill bit on. Uh, look, Duncan, many thanks for your presentation today. Clearly, uh, you know, a lot going on, very interesting. And again, love to get you back later in the year to see uh, how these uh, drilling campaigns go. So have a great weekend and thanks very much. Absolutely. Thank you.